And I'm just going to read the three poems, one of which is in parts, that are in the chat book. And then Juliana and I are going to read a collaborative poem, and then she's going to read some, <coughs> some work. That, of course, involves remembering what, books, what poems are in the chat book. But I, Um, well, I think, I think what I'll do is read uh, the three-poem sequence called The Fire Sermon, and then the poem called Hexeity, and then we'll do the collaborative poem. Where is Fire Sermon? I feel certain it's in this book. I remember where right there it is. I knew I wrote it. <coughs> so this is, this is a, a poem in, in three sections. I always feel like there's either too much or nothing to say about it, but I think I'll, I'll, um, I'll say one thing just in honor of Mia, who's, who's um, among other things, a really great scholar of Gertrude Stein. I was having a discussion with, um, I, was, I, was, I was in a class and we were talking about Tender Buttons by Stein and we were, we were sort of thinking about the question of why there was these three sections in the in the book called objects, food, and rooms, and why those were the three sections, um, and uh, sort of hit on the idea those were sort of the three categories um, that if you're an ordinary person in the world, those are the three things right that you need somehow to get to stay alive to. If you're just you're sort of your basic proletarian, you, you need in order in order to stay continue to show up for work the next day, you need shelter and you need food and you need a certain number of things ob objects. Uh, and so so we sort of assumed that was the basic breakdown, and that that was one of the things that comes up in this in this poem. The first section is called Red Epic, which is also the title of the book. Mediators, matadors, how trivial and objective this world is. Semiologists, stevedores, how objective and trivial. Equally fucked we are. Well, not equally. I have an MCM aesthetic and a radio-controlled death drive. There are two parties to every romance, the waged and the wager. And it had been getting harder to decipher the difference. A throw of the dice will never reveal the real subject. Oh, mediators, stevedores, etc. Madrid is sometimes in flames. Though, confusingly, the Spanish stairs are in Rome, which is often in flames. Oakland is sometimes pleasingly in flames. Athens is almost always aflame. Also Thessaloniki, big data murmurs to me the likelihood that at any given profit rate in a given sector, a given household debt, a given wage deflation, a given neighborhood would be in flames, given fire is the unfettered substance of the situation. To begin again from the beginning, to write only for one's friends. Two lovers make a zero. Two speculations make a hedge. If tender buttons had been written by capital, instead of objects, food, rooms, it would have a single section called labor power. <laughs> Though technical language is not conducive to enlisting popular support, if lunch poems were the poetry of the future, it would be all like I communize this, I communize that. Transistor. There will be a revolution or there will not. If the latter, these poems were nothing but entertainments. If the former, it will succeed or fail. If the latter, these poems were better than nothing. If the former, it will feature riots, fire, and looting, and these will spread, or they will not. If the latter, these poems were curiosities. If the former, it will feature further riots, manifestos, barricades, and slogans. 
and these will leap into popular songs or they will not. If the latter, that's that. If the former, these popular songs will be overcome or they will not. If the latter, these poems were no different than the songs. If the former, the popular itself will be abolished via riots, barricades, manifestos, occupations, and fire, or it will not. If the latter, we will spend several more decades talking about culture. If the former, the revolution will at this point be destroyed from within or without. If the latter, these poems went down fighting. If the former, it will feature awful confrontations with former friends, and there will be further manifestos, new slogans, ongoing occupations, and communes, and lovers will be enemies. We do not know what will happen after this point, but surely this is enough to draw some preliminary conclusions. The poem must be on the side of riots, looting, barricades, occupations, manifestos, communes, slogans, fire, and enemies. Poem ending with a line from Lorene Niedeker. I keep my mind under my arm, where I hold my head, when I walk down to market, when I walk, when I walk down to the market, the actions are social, but the mind is private, when I walk down, walk down to the inferno, the mind is private, I had a vision, the mind is privately held under my arm, when I walk, I had a dream, had a Baudelaire had a Rambeau, the action is social, but Apollinaire walks down, he promenades down to market, promenades in the market, walks out, walks home, walks through streets named after market towns. The names are social, but the century is private. The inferno is social, but the mind follows the head, thinks we can leave, thinks we can go down to the market and leave, just leave thinks we can be in it, but not of it. You know all too well that the best poetry is not the least revolution. You know also that poetry is the best way available to you to affirm this truth. Now we start to see how the trap is sprung, how it was sprung and all before you were born, mind under your arm in the poetry market that exists despite the spontaneous wailings of the poets who believe there must be no market because they cannot afford that for which they should not have to pay. The action is social, but the market exists as the secret police exist. Alas, the market will never send you to jail for your poems. Though we all believed in private we were worth jailing, for the terrible sedition of our dithyrams, believe we deserve this honor in a no passer on, tedo somos pussy riot kind of way. Yet the good reader, geared for riot, zip ties dangling, cometh not for us. The world of the poem is the world. The world is abstract and real. The poem fails just when it is victorious because. One cannot live the absolute of victory over the sun until one can, and we do. And many will die when this happens. Poetry will be renewed in the blood of the negative and dreadfully much else. Hyxeity. I'm not generally inclined to give poems Latin titles. It seems like an annoying thing to do. <laughs> this, this word doesn't exist really in, in English, so I was given no choice by the extreme limited capacities of the English language. Uh, is, is, uh, it's usually it, when it's translated, which is rarely, it's, it's usually it's translated as thisness. If what you want is calm to be restored, you are still the enemy. You have not thought through clearly what this means. If what you want is a national moment of silence, the indictment of a single police officer, or two, or three, you are still the enemy. 
You have chosen the reverie of law for you and your friends. If you want another review panel, a Justice Department study, a return to democracy, rather than for riot and looting to leap beyond itself from county to county, rift to rift until it becomes general, you have not understood what a revolution is. It's this. It's coming out again night after night, more of us than there are of them. It's saying no to every deal. Remember, nothing belongs to you because nothing belongs to anyone. poem we, we wrote together with the help of the internet. <laughs> it's called uh, Misanthropocene 24 Theses. Hashtag. Hashtag Misanthropocene. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> First of all, fuck all y'all. <laughs> Second of all, we would all like to be violet haired, pure honey smiling Sappho hanging out at all hours of the day and night in the air conditioned $83,200 a night royal penthouse suite at the Hotel President Wilson with 12 bedrooms and 12 marble bathrooms plus a wraparound terrace with views of the Alps singing the praises of Anactoria. The misanthropocene has proven to be a time when this is possible for some and not for others. Third of all, it keeps busy. It makes deserts bloom. It makes luxury towers just like it makes architects. It makes blockbusters and it makes producers to make them. It makes universities, roads, conceptual poets. It makes oil drum pyramids. It makes ships of a size called Malacca Max. It makes endless small representations of the African jungle or plains animals, and fish ingest them and vomit them up or don't, and there they sit in their stomachs, and then they die. Fourth of all, you know, it. The it that seems to be nothing but the doing of the world, as in, it's raining. It's raining men is a moment of happiness within the misanthropocene. Fifth of all, but then there is this other rain tilting in to soak vast acres of euro dollars, and we call this West Melancholy. West Melancholy is related to, but not the same as, the Misanthropocene. Sixth of all, when we speak of time, we speak of processes, things going bad. We speak of entropy and the shedding of particles, a cold cesium fountain deep underground. Seventh of all, the sheer scale of the misanthropocene. Our minds feel small and inert. Once, every fragment seemed to bear within it the whole. Now, the whole being too large for the mind to see stands before us always as a fragment. Eighth of all, fragments, the new sapphic rage. Fuck water garden condos, camel garden condos, royal garden, sea garden, garden city beach and everyone who lives in condos named after gardens. One day, gardens will come to get you. If they don't, we will do it for them. <laughs> Ninth of all, fuck the French Revolution, the concept of the quintile, burning man. England is a nation of shopkeepers, capital L literature, and the citizens of Passy. Fuck Whole Foods, sustainability, the Piketty craze of 2014, Harvard University Press, Indie Rock, and Fight Club. Fuck community policing, fuck post-structuralism. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the rock banjo. <laughs> <laughs> fuck critiquing the rock banjo. <laughs> fuck self-reflexive meta-commentary about critiquing the rock banjo. Fuck cupcakes and or park slurred, fuck the martini, fuck your Noguchi coffee table, fuck the crisis in the humanities, Jonathan Safran Forrest, Chipotle cup literature, home ownership, HBO, and fuck pedantically explaining that the bourgeoisie doesn't really apply to any part of US class structure. 
Tenth of all, fuck the propelling of sand from the bottom of the ocean floor and a high arc so as to construct new islands. Fuck that this is called rainbowing. Fuck any sort of dredge. Fuck how racehorses don't get to fuck each other, but instead the stallion is trained to mount a dummy mare made of plywood and fuck a heated plastic vagina. Fuck the prince of any country ever. Fuck Palm Jemai and Palm Jabel Ali and Atrazine. Fuck everyone who's bought a big bag of ant poison because ants have a social stomach and you are one selfish motherfucker if you can't let them have the very small amounts of food they want to share equally among themselves. <laughs> and fuck this list with its mixture of environmental destruction and popular culture smugness and fuck every one of you that laughed at that rock banjo joke and fuck us all for writing it. And fuck not just the Google Doc, the Google bus, but the Google Doc this poem wrote in on and fuck us for sitting here reading you a rock banjo joke while the rock New Mexico meadow jumping mouse went extinct. Fuck that this happened two days and 20 hours ago. And fuck that next up is a Sierra Nevada yellow-legged frog because we've always liked frogs. They're vulnerable skin, our vulnerable skin. Eleventh of all. And fuck that self-insulating move where you call yourself on your own bullshit to prove you aren't self-righteous. <laughs> <laughs> fuck it for just being a version of liberal please don't hit me politics. And seriously, how did this poem come to revolve around the rock banjo? <laughs> Twelfth of all, the tempo of the misanthropocene has been measured precisely by the decay of the workers' movement. Zero o'clock came and went, more West melancholy. Fuck Robert Berger, Munir Haidar, and Scott Hutchinson. They are but big players in this misanthropocene, but fuck them, and everyone who has ever been nice to them. That was thirteenth of all for those of you counting, and this list is just the beginning. It ends with the names of everyone at this reading. Ben Furstenberg, Natalie Cornflakes, Andrew Knauer, Juliana Sparr, Brian Glasscock, happy birthday, but fuck you, Wendy Trevino, fuck Joshua Clover, June Fee, and Ali Bektosh, because those motherfuckers from the beginning of this section are still alive, because we haven't killed them yet. Fourteenth of all, back to that banjo. If you've ever imitated that dueling banjos riff, fuck you and your homophobia. Fifteen. Unable to bear their loans, the graduates and the dropouts drift off from the formal economy into student favelas, cheek by jowl with the new poolings of the wage diaspora. And we act as if this informalization has nothing to do with the misanthropocene, but really, that's just what it is. 16. And our nostalgia for when students were students and workers were workers is the formal reign in this poem. Fuck your West melancholy. 17th of all. That's what she said and... 18th of all. You know that moment when you realize there's nothing to be done and you just walk outside because you need to get away from the family form, perhaps? Maybe from the home you own, sort of, or the bank does? Or maybe just the cat's constant mewing? And yet, whatever it is that family, debt, or cat stands in for comes with you. And so you start to walk down the street to see if you can get away, and you can't for whatever it is follows you as if it knows you in the way that your undergraduate institution knows you, that always knows your address to send you requests for money, even if you just moved last week sort of way. And it is dark out, and there's a small moon, so not so much light, and even the street light doesn't work. And the street is darker than usual, and you sit down on the low concrete fence that surrounds the neighbor's house, and you realize there is nothing that can be done to get rid of this thing that you need to get away from. And so you just sit there staring out into space, getting cold, thinking about the short, strong legs and small ears and eyes of the Yelm pocket gopher, how their lips close behind their front incisors, how they use their front incisors for burrowing, how as they burrow, their soft, loose pelts enable them to move backwards to their tunnels as easily as they move forwards, how they have two oh-so-soft fur-lined cheek pouches extending from the lower portion of their face to their shoulders, that they use to transport food, and these can be turned completely inside out. And how the UC Davis website notes that gophers are non-game mammals, which means that anyone can control them at any time and in any legal manner. And so they recommend trapping, baiting with toxic baits, fumigation, exclusion, dogs, chewing gum, laxatives, vibrating snakes, and gas explosive devices. And you think about these things with despair and sapphic rage because you can't bear to think about whatever it is that is only realizable as a family, the debt, the cat. And thinking about the almost extinct soft fur-lined cheek pouches at least lets you feel. Fuck that moment, most of all. 
Fuck that moment most of all when you have to write an essay about the avant-garde. And you begin filled with resentment for this essay. Filled with resentment for the people who asked you to write it. Filled with resentment for yourself. Filled with resentment for the idea of the avant-garde. But you start writing because you exist only in the phrase, you start writing. And then halfway through, you start to feel like maybe you do care about the avant-garde. I would like to be part of the avant-garde. I would like to arrive at a party wearing a, ca a caterpillar for a mustache and have parts of your life transpire in a subtly lit gallery in, I don't know, Zurich or something. Just a white room filled with a sweet feeling called West Melancholy. And you feel this even as you are completely aware that what you are writing is of the genre studies in comparative whiteness. And the avant-garde is lower limit, terrible idea, upper limit, totally unnecessary. And even as you are aware of these things, you are really moving in the essay. You're listening to Pharrell and Shakira and Iggy Azalea, who are not the avant-garde, but you are moving. You are making short paragraphs about the avant-garde, and the short paragraphs make you feel empty and clean, like you haven't eaten for a day or two. The short paragraphs make you feel empty and clean, not like you are a Zurich gallery with subtle lighting and almost nothing on the walls. Not like that, but you are filled with the same sort of sensation, with the melancholy of the text, with text melancholy. And the problem is, this is 19th of all, the problem is this. You have friends you like and friends you don't like. And you can sort of imagine the friends you don't, you, sorry, you can sort of imagine the friends you don't like milling around the gallery, possibly exchanging that special kind of one eyebrow up glance that conveys your Twitter handle directly to the minds of others. But you cannot imagine the friends you like being in the gallery together. And then you remember you can't imagine the friends you like being in the same room together in general. And that the last year or two has been characterized by the impossibility of people being in the same room together, whether you like them or not. And this is so much the case that you are glad when one of your enemies moves away because fuck them. You're also glad when one of your friends moves away, because even though you are in Oakland, center of the universe, it seems like getting out. And this is the truth of things. Not the avant-garde, not the gallery, not the caterpillar that is not your mustache, not even the Miami blue butterfly caterpillar, which is the next caterpillar to go extinct. Oh, Miami. But the rifts that now make up roughly 70% of all social life, and you feel the rifts as truth because the hatred is real. The hatred is an objective force, like debt is an objective force. And the wage and the heat and the end of the world are objective forces and the rifts are in this sense objective. And you call this objectivity the misanthropocene. 20th of all, this is how the misanthropocene ends. We go to war against it. My friends go to war against it. They run howling with joy and terror against it. I go with them. 21. This is how to set an oil well on fire. Rub and lean against it. Spread your front legs and swing your neck at it. The power of a blow depends on the weight of your skull and the arc of your swing. Then sparks. 22. Here is how to take out the electrical grid. Pierce the switching protection and control equipment and transformer with hypodermic genitalia and eject into the circuit breakers so as to short circuit or overload currents. Smaller distribution stations may use reclosers, circuit breakers, or fuses for protection of distribution circuits. These two can be pierced by the introduction of a specialized intermittent organ through an external groove overlying the pleural membrane in the fuse wall. 23. Here's how to capsize container ships. Swim along behind it in a train and grip with the teeth and continue to swim as you insert your claspers into the cloaca and pump. 24th of all, here is how to kill a policeman. Here is how to abolish culture. Here is how to knock down a Boeing AH-64D Apache longbow. Here is how to loot a grocery store. Here is how to levitate the Pentagon. Sappho, 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 not by chance. And there we were. The light that fall was somewhat golden, and the trees held their leaves for longer than usual, and it was warm in a cool sort of way. There was a mist or a fog or a smoke that held us, 
and we walked with this mist or fog or smoke and amidst it also, and we breathed it in deep. It cloaked us from the inside. That winter the wolf came, came to us, came near to us, walked toward this fog of us. He was two and a half years old and he was the first one back. He was alone, wandering over mountains, across highways, through forest. Back and forth he went, alone. He was looking for others, they were not to be found. Yet he was mutual, we noticed, he cavorted with coyotes. What else could he do? He was the only one, not as in the chosen one, but as one of the uneradicated ones. We called him Or Seven. That winter, as Or Seven walked to where we were, although not with any desire to be with us, we waited for the mist, the fog, the smoke to turn into the rains, saying to each other often that the rains are coming, surely the rains are coming. But the rains never really came, or came so late that we barely noticed them, and when they arrived, we just put up a tarp and waited them out. Together, there, under the tarp, for a few minutes, unevenly there, but there, together, still. That tarp is a version of what mattered, together. That winter we were mainly men, not at first, but later. At first it was hard to say, we were so many different things. That was the idea. By the end though, by winter we were mainly men. And those of us who were not men circled around each other unevenly. Still learning though, still, together, we had no other choice. That winter, every time we wrote the word interest, we replaced it with the word love. That winter we just rhymed and rhymed on, together, using words, together. That winter, everything suddenly written in our pentameters, our alexandrins, our heroic couplets, which was often an associational, sentence-based, quiet line, one indebted to lyric in which the we stood in for the beloved, and yet there was almost never a description of this beloved. No listing of their red lips, their firm breasts, their smooth skin, leaving a sort of generic atmosphere. I could tell you of other things too, a European influence, a Middle Eastern influence, a list of skirmishes, a feeling of it being nothing, no, wait, something, no, see, nothing, possibly something, no, nothing. Let's just admit it, we lost all the skirmishes, even the one called the PR war. But that winter we were there, under a tarp, close, together, just dealing with, together, went looking and found coyotes. Thank you.